Welcome to His House of Learning Podcast, episode number three. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Today's topic is going to be on spiritual warfare. Where oftentimes we find ourselves with a more common war, and that is the culture war. My dear listeners, I'm here to tell you that such is a secondary importance, if not an utter distraction, perhaps even for many of us a trap, especially within the church. Because, after all, and we should know this, but if you've forgotten, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And sure, the culture is abstract, conceptual, ideological, wherever you may put it. But all in all, it is a conflict with men. With names, after all. But unless we forget that the most wicked of men... Those are, those are godless and those who claim to be of the Lord and yet have no form of godliness. In fact, there's no power within it whatsoever. We still find ourselves hating them, resenting them, focusing our attention and energies, if not money, upon defeating them. And such is a lack of a waste. For they are merely pawns. In a bigger picture, they are just pieces of well, for the spiritual realm, realm, that of the kingdom of darkness, for them is the game, and we are expendable. And when it's all said and done, remember, it is not a matter of the loss of your health, of your homes, of your property. Listen carefully. For when it all comes down to it, it's a matter of the spirit, a matter of the soul, the mind, the conscience. And last but not least, yes, your body, your flesh. But see, the issue is we're fighting in reverse. Instructions from our Lord to everybody in general, whichever category that, that, that you fit on this side of heaven. We're reading from Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through 9 to start us off. Consider where you're at in your life. For, mo for, for most of this applies to every single one of us, especially those of us who are in adulthood. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service, as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, and whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master, capital M, also is in heaven, neither is there a respect of persons with him. Indeed, Lord God Almighty, Yahweh, Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there is no respect of persons with him. And that's the thing. I look across both sides of the aisle, I find, well, betrayal, rebellion, masquerades. On one side, what we call left wing, the liberal, progressive, a fast paced rush into the abyss. On the right side, the conservative, traditional, slow but steady, and yet the precipice comes. There are many who are on the broad way, and there is a narrow way off the path into heavenly glory, into salvation, but few indeed find it. My dear listeners, in this summer, I've identified so many of us enduring and experiencing, going through, encountering so much within my own household into that of our extended family and, f and those of our closest of friends. There has been much challenge, trial, loss of health, property, 
in some cases, hope. Praise be to God, not so much within mine. It's not such a loss for others in hope and faith and even love. Charitable living. And even indeed a loss of life. Some have dearly departed. And for some of us, it's just been one thing after another, some far more than others. I say that this is indeed, and this is amongst believers and non-believers alike. My hypothesis, this is preparation. This is a great sifting. For remember, life is but a vapor. As somebody pointed out, I can't remember the source, we all know the scientific fact that the human body is mostly composed of H2O, of water. So it's only fitting that the Lord says that life is but a vapor. Imagine that, a wisp of moisture that dissipates into the heavens. And our Lord gives us no promise of long-term success, whatever that we may think it is, or glory, or honor, or praise, everlasting to everlasting here on earth. But that comes with the resurrection. Is indeed the imitate, the true, the true, true, not imitations, correct me there, thank you, it is the true likeness, resemblance, following of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who when first coming here as a man, found no glory. But oh, <laughs> upon defeating death, sin, deception, at its finest, sits on the right hand of the glory of the Father and extends it to us. In the meantime, though, where are we at here? We've been told time and time again throughout the word, we see it in the stories, in the accounts. We see it in the doctrines, in the teachings, that we are to fight and run, swim, march, learn, study, be diligent, ever vigilant, vigilant, oh, excuse me, I was trying to say valiant, next, the courage, bravery, because it is a matter of the heart, the soul, the mind, and then finally the body. We seek heavenly things, my dear listeners. My dear brethren, and I speak mostly to you, if not for well, pretty much all of this, you alone. Speaking of which, let's turn our attention back to Ephesians chapter 6, because here's the thing. When it comes to spiritual warfare, and we hear this, some of you may hear this term more than others, some of you, you haven't heard it forever. There are three key things, and none of them can be neglected, and they all support one another. So if you think, well, I'm not this, or I'm more of this, well, that's not the instructions of our Lord, as we'll read pretty soon. The three pillars, the three sets for the foundation of spiritual combat engaging the unseen and defending our hearts our minds our souls and to extent our bodies from the enemy is repentance study of the scripture and fervent spirit filled prayer all three are not optional the focus text for this is ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20 with an intermission here and there from going to the words of our words of christ the prophecies as well as a reminder of how timeless this is that this is the kind of knowledge this is the kind of discipline this is the kind of life we must live in order to in, in order to partake in the promises of our Lord. 
I could say a number of things, but let's move on. So I'll say them later. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse, starting with verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Forget your numbers, forget your churches, forget your organizations, forget your political and economic clout. It means nothing. Because remember, the enemy you face manipulates that like clay to be dried and burned to be smashed and grinded to powder Satan and his kingdom they fear not men only the power of his might his spirit the same spirit that when our Lord once again you we a lot of us know this story but we don't take it to heart because remember the temptations of Christ Christ had nothing to repent of he was perfect sinless and yet he did what he fasted he disciplined his flesh his body to focus on heavenly things so no one was confronted by the enemy because he studied, he knew the scripture, he was able to not be deceived. And because he was full of the Spirit, full of the Spirit, he was able to pray. And pray and pray he did to receive what? As he said, the bread of life, the water of life. And he endured and overcame darkness, evil at its worst. And he promises the same spirit, the same, not a lesser version, my dear listeners, the same. The only thing that separates us between Christ and ourselves is the fact that Christ is the Son of God. Otherwise, aside from that, we can do what he's done. So don't be thinking that you're a demigod of sorts, that we are divine. Such blasphemy. Blasphemy, but we are mere creatures, new creatures. Ah, redeemed creatures, called the sons and daughters of the Lord God, when we are born again in this spirit. Let's continue. Verse 11 Put on the whole armor of God. Some of you are saying, This is some of you, if not many of you are saying, This is a Sunday school lesson. Listen, learn, and weep. But it is time, it is time, it is time. Not tomorrow, not next season. This is urgent. I am facing a turning point in my life. I am reconsidering so many things in my life. Especially this upcoming school year. As an update, I'm only part-time. I'm teaching two junior high science classes. But in fact, I get to a dis get to a design and execute the curriculum. I was able to choose the material and whatnot. It's a uh, go check it out yourself. It's called Berean Builders. Berean Builders Science Curriculum. Science in the Atomic Age. It's one of the very few science Christian science curriculums I would actually recommend. Very few. I don't recommend that many of many curriculum Christian curriculums in general. Usually I, I go full custom. But this is a pretty Decent exception for sure. Designed for homeschoolers, by the way. Anywho, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, just like our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ did, not just those 40 days, but all throughout his life and ministry. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Does that sound like a culture war to you, my dear listeners? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And having done all, done all you could, and there's no promise of victory in our sense some fantasy especially the sense of like well we get to save what we want to save and redeem what we want to redeem and like no no 
Because when it's all said and done, it's a matter of institutions of the of the of establishment of a civilization. No. And I speak to a lot of you who are, if not claimed to be, and not so my brethren. We are not here to redeem culture and civilization, but to reconcile the souls of men to our Lord. That is our prerogative, and that's where we fail, and that is why. That is why. Darkness is strangling us as many nations. Nothing more, nothing less. It's 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Let's pause for a moment. I should have paused at verse 12, where we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let us turn our attention over to Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 13. Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 13. Yeah, that's right, I'm using a good old-fashioned hardback paper Bible. Everybody should have several. <laughs> Everybody should have several, preferably the New King James and, Ge and Geneva Bible. Yes, I know those two were historically opposed to each other, but as far as I'm concerned, they are written by men of the same spirit, although I say, uh, I guess it makes me a little bit elitist. But, yeah, the Geneva Bible, little... My our breath our Puritan breath a little too rebellious for my taste, but keep that in mind. I'm not saying in the Catholic sense that King James was a saint. <laughs> Don't think I have that high regard like you know, like my lord. I try not to be a respecter of men. Even I honor them where honor is given, but titles mean little to nothing to me, especially in the academic world. Ooh. Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? That I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, Elijah, sorry, Isaiah, <laughs> and others, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah's. So Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, or Elijah, sorry, Elias is Elijah. Anyways, he said, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Jesus is no mere prophet. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And isn't that strange how many of men, especially following the ascension of Christ, especially our Islamic cousins, shoot even Joseph Smith, would boast that, that either Christ was not God, or he's a lesser God, a lesser creature. No, it says, made explicit right here, not a mere prophet, not a mere holy man, not a mere, not a mere creature that received revelation, but no, no, no. He is the revelation. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Flesh and blood have not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And bear in mind, my Catholic cousins, if you are reading this and you think that Peter is the rock in question, no. In a nutshell, Peter, Petra, stone, little stone you can pick up with your hand the same kind of size stone that David would use against Goliath 
but the rock being informed here is indeed a large stone, a foundation stone, a cornerstone. And the only foundation, the only cornerstone is the Lord himself. Peter, indeed, was a dear brother of the Lord. A man that lived in the spirit, the word. Lord, why? Because he repented. Recognizing that Jesus Christ was indeed the Son of God. Was, still is, and is to come. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Fun fact. This is spiritual, predominantly spiritual in nature. And that's where we've gone wrong. The culture war is a matter of earthly things. The spiritual war is a matter of what matters because the spiritual is indeed what has. Especially that of the darkness, its tendrils within the minds and hearts, and thus afflicts the bodies and emotions, the psyches of men. Verse 20 then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ, because it wasn't time yet to reveal that to the public so that he could make his ways around the bout. But notice here in verses 21 to 28, before we move, go back to Ephesians, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him, began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, and this is important. When you read the scripture, you gotta think about life today. For this is instructions for the believer, for men, to repent and turn away from their old life to live a new life in Christ. What is Peter rebuking Jesus for? That he will suffer and die, because that is his instructions, that is his mission to serve the will of the Father in his spirit. And yet, what do a many a men say, whether outside the church and inside the church? There's this avoidance, if not, well, mocking of the willingness to suffer, to endure trial, tribulation, to overcome persecution. When you do what you know in your heart of hearts is the will of the Lord God. Why is that? Why is that? Because look what Jesus says in response to Peter. And Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, Oh, sorry about that, verse 23. <laughs> but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because he worships Satan? Quote, unquote, worships Satan? Because he doesn't believe in God? No. Because... For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. There is too many in and outside the church, too many, and it's becoming more blatant as time passes, that openly, openly, without any lack of brazenness, just trumpet, just hold up, endure, and if not worship, the ambitions, the aspirations, and the goals of men, even godless men, over the things of our Lord. And what is Jesus' response to that? Get behind me, Satan. For that is indeed the will of the devil, who is a liar, a thief, and a murderer. So be wary of that, my dear listener, as I should be, as I should ever be vigilant, diligent, 
Let me be valiant before deception, before the attacks of the enemy. And fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff, his rod and staff, comfort me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shallows, of the shadow of death. The shadow of death. This is a fight. Spiritual warfare is a fight to the death. Nothing more, nothing less. Let's go for our attention back over to Ephesians. Where we last left off was verse 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And where's your loins? Round your groin. Round your waist. And what is it be to be girt about? What's to secure them? Truth. Your fleshly desires. Think about it. That's not just your groin area, but that's also shortly below what? Your stomach, your belly. So the, so the desires of the body, of the flesh, are to be girt, are to be restrained, are to be secured by what? Truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. So truth is to be, in essence, more desirable and more substance to your very body, your very being. Remember, what did Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan, because thou savorest not the things of God, but savorest the things of men. And Jesus, fasting, weak, in the flesh, in the 40 days, is able to be in the word and in the spirit, resist Satan, because he desires not, he, just, he savors not the things of men. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, so your loins girt with truth, and having on the breastplate, what's guarding your heart? What is guarding your heart? And oftentimes the breastplate even goes down to your belly, but more importantly, what's guarding your heart? The, what's guarding that vital area? Righteousness. Because you're not, because you're, because you're in the truth. Truth is more desirable than food and sexual pleasure. Even with that of your own spouse. And your, and your heart is guarded by what? Righteousness. The good work of the Lord. So it's not a matter of thinking it, of feeling it, but engaged in living it. Your heart is guarded by the good work, the active good work of the Lord. Whether it be in private or in public. That is what guards your heart. Imagine that. It's in the Word. And Christ himself exemplified it. Let's go to this Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. These are so many, so many prophecies of the coming Messiah, of our Lord and Savior, of Emmanuel, God with us. 11, 1 through 5. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, the father of David, the line of David, that Christ technically, but not in the flesh, descends from. And the branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So once again, not the matter of just the flesh, not just the matter of his loins, of his stomach, of his gut. Verse 4, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And who are the meek? Those who focus on doing what they ought to. There'll be equity for them. 
those who diligently do what they ought to. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, because when your flesh is under control, is of, under the truth, Thus, your heart is free to perform acts of righteousness, of the good work of the Lord. That's how you know you're living in truth. That's how you know you're in truth, is when you are like our Lord, living in righteousness. Your focus is more on not just satisfying yourself, being a Satanist, because after all, I usually don't, because <laughs> there's quite a few things I disagree with. Truth unedited, you may have heard, heard of him or not. Um, I consider him a brother indeed. Mistaken a number of things, but a brother nonetheless. And one of the, in his last, one of his last videos, as of recent, he makes a very strong and compelling hypothesis. Much more so than much, and most of them are. Some of them not so much, but <laughs> I'll leave you to that if you so choose. But he he says that the world at large is being converted to well the well the doctrines of the Church of Satan, and people may not be aware of it or 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 not. But guess what? The first the first tenet. That the doctrines of the Church of Satan is S literally self-indulgence over abstinence. Girt your loins, have control over your sensual desires, your gut, with the truth, so that you may indeed your heart may beat with and be guarded by righteousness. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of what? Peace. And where is that peace? Here's the thing. Where did that peace come from? The gospel. The gospel of peace. The gospel. It's not separate, completely separate gospel. It is a part of the gospel. So what's the key thing? If you want to have peace, you have to what? Walk in the gospel. Know the gospel. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 50, 52, verses 7 through 10. Isaiah 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, the gospel, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Zion is referring to more of what spiritual Israel, those in covenant with the Lord at large, which includes us Gentiles grafted in. It's speaking and you're like, oh, you're reaching. Am I now? Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. In fact, I skipped over back in, back in Isaiah chapter 11. Later on, it also speaks of what? That such promises go to that unto, unto the Gentiles in due time. And that time has long come. 
going down to verse 13, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently, he shall be exalted and extolled, and be very high. As many were stonied at thee, his visage was so marred, more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Jesus Christ. Prior is crucifixion. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. Indeed, how many presidents, kings, and emperors today, and then who knows how many more and how long for tomorrow, shut their mouths at him. They don't want to speak to him, they don't want to talk about him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. They will see things, and they will have to consider things. Sadly, many of them, as shown in the coming days, coming days of, of grand deception, they will see and they will consider, and yet they will rebel nonetheless. Don't be amongst them. Don't be amongst them. Verses 16, above all, in Ephesians chapter 6, above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So what's your defense? Faith. And what do they teach a lot today, especially for some retarded reason? I mean, just developmentally challenged reason. And many of us swallow it like slop. Being more pigs and dogs than men. That, well, yeah, I mean, in order to grow in your faith, you have to doubt. You should doubt as you study. You should doubt as you pray. My dear listeners, hello, my brethren, such is a subtle disarmament of your defense against the enemy, and thus you are left utterly useless in this form of combat. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So if you can't even defend yourself from a distance, what good are you up, up close and personal? Faith is the shield to resist the enemy even when he's from afar sniping at you with bitter very well seasoned accuracy at that for doesn't indeed the enemy know how to get us each and all going of course us being men the differences aren't that significant 17 and take the helmet of salvation look at that the vital areas and where's your brain where's your mind in your skull in your head and take the helmet of salvation so what girds are what guards our mind what protects our minds salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so righteousness living the good work of the Lord guards our hearts. Living in the truth, sitting, sitting, resting in the truth keeps our desires, whether it be sensual or even nat or even as I mean, more natural, more not overtly sinful as a lot of people say overt. There's 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 you know there's covert sin, there's overt sin, there's direct sin, there's indirect sin, there's it's like no, it's sin. It's sin. And if you're not living in truth, guess what you're living in? Not, if you're not sitting, you're not resting in truth, what do you think? You're living a lie. And you're living a lie, according to our Lord, is sin. So if you're living, sitting in truth, resting in truth, then you have control. There's restraint. There's, you have, you have violated the first tenant of the church of Satan, self-indulgence over abstinence. 1 
first imagine that that is in essence the first declaration of war against the enemy <laughs> imagine that something is simple oh wait not quite not quite far-fetched when you think about it what was the first temptation of Christ in 40 days against the enemy he refused to eat bread not by bread alone does man live but by what every word of the Lord every word of the Lord the truth imagine that it's like it all fits together it's like our Lord was knew what to have written down for us for so many centuries timeless indeed and our feet and we are at peace we were walking in the gospel we're able to defend against the enemy in faith not doubt don't be a fool don't be stupid Don't make, any, don't make such a ridiculous excuse to take yourself out of the fight from the very get-go. Don't com, you know, complain if you are indeed a POW, a prisoner of war, because you refuse to walk in faith. In fact, let's go over to verse 18, 17, salvation. If you, if you, if you indeed, if you indeed, are excited your, your heart is just your heart your mind your soul are just so thankful grateful for your salvation that will keep that will guard your thoughts people the sword of the spirit which is the word of god the sword of the spirit the offensive weapon and oftentimes defensive the offensive mostly offensive keep that in mind mostly offensive sword is predominantly offensive for offense, defense is secondary, which is the word of God. And we got 66 books, so plenty of it. Not too little, not too much, I would say. And I say that because before we go on, I'm not, I say this as a, as a very strong recommendation, but if you know, uh, if you know Chick Tracks, Jack T. Trick, Yes, just like Truth Unedited, but less than him. There's some things of which, especially when it comes to politics and whatnot, I don't agree with on our dearly de departed, you know, you know, brother Jack T. Chick. Look forward to meeting that man on the other side of the side of this world in heaven. But one thing for sure, amongst many, that he had right. He had right was the need of the basics of the basic three repentance scripture study and prayer and when it comes to scripture study his bare minimum you know, bare minimum recommendation is reading five chapters of the bible a day and my wife and i have been doing that for a little over two weeks we're gonna need to do it a little bit later after dinner and boy boy has it done very well for us and let me tell you something the enemy will stop at nothing to divert you from it but when you execute it oh you have the fuel you got the flames for the fight battle on press on speaking of which verse 18 so we want to re repentance scripture study Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Prayer and supplication. So we're constantly putting out and receiving, putting out and receiving in the spirit. So if you, you should know what to pray for and know what know what's coming from the Lord why because what is this because what is the spirit what is you know what, what is the what is the word of spirit but the word of God so you can know the spirit 
know the spirit, what you what you know how you speak to the spirit, how you know to speak to the Lord, how to speak to God, how to res and what you're listening from him, his word, because we have it written down. So when you receive a message, when you receive words back, we should be able to like we should be able to know the good shepherd's voice because we got plenty of him available to us. To decipher to discern which spirit is speaking to us his or some other that's quite hostile in intent we got the owner's manual so there's no excuse for it my dear listeners he's given us all that we need and then some and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints so we need to be praying for and receiving the good word of the Lord from our fellow brethren, fellow disciples, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I, we've been doing that more this summer too, oh my goodness. It is a blessing, it is a blessing. Those locally, out of state, and I used to do a few different parts of the world directly. I, I've been praying a lot more of, Especially for the martyrs in so many different parts of the world. I used to know, used to, used to be in contact with a few brethren outside of the country. Not anymore, unfortunately, but I still pray for them and still pray for so many un unseen. And I definitely try to stay in contact with and encourage in the spirit and the word. So many of my brethren across this nation, especially around the, here in the West, across the whole Western part of the good old US of A. Verse 19, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Boldly to do what? Make known the mystery of the gospel. Because for many people, they don't know it because they haven't read it and they haven't studied it. And they haven't allowed the Spirit to reveal it to them. But such, if we be indeed followers of Christ, shouldn't be in any trouble. He will indeed teach us and help us with what we need to know and share in the time that we have. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, an ambassador in bombs, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Christ himself told Peter, I am going to face the religious and civil authorities, I am going to be persecuted, I'm going to be tortured, I'm going to be executed, crucified, and I will rise again in three days. But because that does not suit the, the desires, the flippancies, the fragrancies, the weakness of the minds of men, because we pursue lesser things, things that will die, things that will be corrupted. The Lord said, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savors not the things of God, but savor the things of men. Verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, just like your Lord, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, because why he... Because... Because that's thing in our for us, we repented of our of our sin, of our old of our old nature, of our old man. We become a saint. We are righteous, justified by Christ because of His righteousness, because of His perfect sacrifice, and thus we walk in the Spirit, and we know His Spirit because we know His Word, and thus we can take it to take it to. Take it to the darkness, for we have the light. And thus we shall not fear, fear the darkness, we shall not fear death, and we shall not be subject, easily captured by deception. Turn your attention over to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Verses, first starting off with verses 1 through 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. We ending soon, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always to pray, and not to faint. Not to faint. 
like I said, it's a this is a this is this is spiritual warfare. This is combat to the death. Pray, pray, and not faint. Be conditioned. Be disciplined. Be strong. Able to endure until the very end. The battle's not over until it's over. Verse 2, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? And shall not God avenge? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Don't be concerned or worried with evil of men, because no many, how many men you oppose, there will always be plenty more. Plenty more children of the devil, members of the church of Satan those who savor the things of men to do evil and wickedness against you. It doesn't matter. You can fight all you want. It's a loss. That is a lost cause. That is a lost cause. But how do you actually make this make this viable, make this worth worth it? How do you walk in the gospel of peace? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. And the Lord does not command you to seek death and destruction. But like Christ, to seek life. To love our enemies. But that's the thing. But that's the thing, though. If they refuse to repent, if they refuse to become new creatures, they refuse to stop being the servants of Satan. Just like we were, just like we were at some point in our lives, my dear listeners, my dear brethren. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Shall he find faith on the earth. Lord will avenge his children, avenge his followers. But nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Yeah, doubt's not going to cut it. Being lukewarm is not going to cut it. Praying with maybe, perhaps, is not going to cut it. Let's go on over to verses to chapter 17. Chapter 17. Because right before here, because here's the thing though. Let's go to chapter 17. We're going to go to verses. Verses 20. 17 verse 20. You know, for sake of time. For sake of time, please read it yourselves. What, what was, but chapter, this is chapter 17 verses 20 through 37. And this was a response, a follow up to what? Why, why pray? Why pray? Why pray? Why that men ought always to pray and not to faint? Because the days are coming. The days of Noah. The days of judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah. The days of which some men will surprisingly just be removed. removed from a place, from a people, because 
I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. And not just those living, but many of the dead, many of the martyrs, many of those like Christ slaughtered, maltreated, abused, and murdered without holy cause. The Lord God has not forgotten anything, and that's why he seeks our repentance so he may forgive us, because his justice is coming. Spiritual warfare, people, not the culture war. The culture war is mere fancy talk. It's mere, to me, it's mere nonsense at this point. I care nothing for it. I care nothing for it. Hosea chapter 4 will be our last en entry. You know what? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You need Some of you need to hear this before we, before we conclude with the final passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17-21, something I've said over and over again. But read and weep, and I say weep, why? Be humbled. And let the Lord do his work in you. All day, every day, and I am not exempt. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, For therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. This is where this is true reconciliation, people. This is the reconciliation that matters. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. Once again, what's that reconciliation? To wit, that God was in Christ re 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 reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the, the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, that's Christ, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Leave behind the old, embrace the new, the rest, what was dead and brought to life by, by Christ, by the righteousness, the perfect righteousness, the perfect love, the perfect mercy and grace of our Lord. And we do not deserve any of such things, oh no. I have seen and witnessed the hearts of men for over 32 years now. And no one's going to convince me otherwise that we don't deserve to die. We don't deserve to allow the fruit of our wickedness to consume us. Praise be unto God for his mercy and grace. For how, how he loves us. That is true charity. All right. Remember, Hosea chapter 4 is our final. Before we get to that, I want you those... I'm a, I am a citizen, a resident of the state of Arizona, as of later this month, for four years. And I can safely say I am quite saddened by the state, no pun intended, of... Of the conservative, of the traditional, of the orthodox people. It's quote unquote, you know, the right wing of that of our nation. For indeed, especially those amongst institutions, like for instance, the Heritage Foundation, based in Washington, D.C., during their 50th anniversary conference, who was the, who gave the invocation, the opening prayer? Peter Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, that of Paul Scalia, a Jesuit trained priest, the Roman Catholic Church. Indeed, and you listen to the prayer, and it's on, listen to his prayer, his 50th anniversary prayer on YouTube, on their channel, in their media. Indeed, he essentially 
makes just like just, just like the papacy always does. Idolatry, you know, maybe you'll, you'll practice in, in their idolatry, you know, makes an idol out of freedom. Indeed, it's not a matter of the spirit, but a matter of the culture, a matter of, of, what, is, of what men savor and not what God holds in high regard. And then, you have the Centennial Institute of Colorado Christian University, the uh, Western Conservative Conference, and they have such people, such women, such pastors, as they're so-called, like Paula White, who is currently one of the spiritual advisors of Donald Trump, in which, yes, and Paula White already has so much heresy, and amongst the things that she has said, that shows that she's indeed only tool for that of the m members of the mystery of Babylon members of mystery of Babylon all the false religions and cults doctrines of devils you know she is you know what her take is on modern day Judaism on orthodox Judaism same Judaism that has men like Dennis Prager that believes that lust and carnal desire is not sinful, including the viewing, indulgence of, porno of pornography. She says that Jews, these are Orthodox Jews who do not believe Jesus Christ as the Messiah, who, have, who are indeed not in the covenant of their Lord. That Orthodox Jews should not be a target of conversion but should be learned from the same as the thing jesuits roman catholics jesuits in particular all their false doctrines and philosophies and even orthodox jews with their beliefs cemented in the extra biblical teachings of the talmud the mysticism if not a cultism, cultism that is the kabbalah including the belief in reincarnation yes orthodox jews believe in reincarnation transmigration of the soul and yes we ought to learn from them not convert them but learn from them such is such is the mainstay the mainstream the contemporaneous of so-called traditional conservative orthodox american Christianity, especially in the political realm. This is what is fighting the culture war. Uy. Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, we'll conclude with this. Please pray for me as I reconsider and seek the Lord's guidance and direction and faith, spirit according to his word. For our, I'm having a hard time hearing him and following suit because and the enemy is so many ways has been on me and my brethren but step by step he guides me so I have hope I have hope that I will go and do as he pleases, but I must stay the course. For this is my lament about the state of my country, state of my people. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath the controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. This applies to us, especially those of us who claim to be his children, claim to be his, his, you know, his followers. The covenant has been extended to that of the Gentiles. We are not, we are not Hebrew by blood, Hebrew by birth, but we are indeed Hebrew by adoption, in the spiritual sense. That is indeed the gift of the resurrection of our Lord. 
Verse 2, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Indeed, notice so much of nature, whether being taken out by us or perhaps even being spared by our Lord. We know not what we do. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Meaning that they won't receive spiritual, actual spiritual God-fearing counsel. We just go to church, or we don't go to church. Either, either way, we don't seek truth. We don't seek knowledge. We desire not to exercise mercy. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in, in, in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Verse 6. This is a verse that's constantly abused and misused, even, even in the right side of things, quote-unquote. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and then we stop there. See? We just, and remember, I'm a private school teacher. We just need to, we just need to educate people better. People are dying for lack of knowledge, but it tells you what that knowledge is. And that is why we are so ineffective, so weak, just constantly prisoners of war, if not willful, willful subjects, vassals of the kingdom of hell because we refuse to fight and we feign ignorance in how to fight. What is that lack of knowledge? Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And I say, why not? If you don't know the law of the Lord, you ain't teaching them. If you're not teaching them, well then, where are they? Look at the younger generations. They're confused. They're living for their pleasures. They're living for their guts. They're angry. They're, they're apathetic and different. They have no vision. They are blind and often being led by blind people. Blind elders, millennials, Generation X, and, boom, and baby boomers. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Indeed, this Western world especially. We eat and we eat and we eat and we're never satisfied. And we commit whoredom. Sodomy, fornication, adultery. And look at that, our numbers are dwindling. This is where spiritual warfare comes in. Repent, study and know the, the Holy Scripture, the sword, the spirit, the spirit, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Lord, and pray, 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 pray. Pray so much that you won't pray so much for strength against the enemy and for your fellow brethren. Make sure we pray for others. Pray so much that even despite it, we won't faint. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against every spirit. 
of darkness, principality, and power. It is time for us to make a, to make a change, to take a stance. How soon is the Lord coming? I don't know. But fun fact, the battle, the war is here. It is now, it is today, it is tomorrow, until his second coming, until his perfect reign of peace. Until then, until ten, then wake up. Don't be ignorant any longer. Don't doubt. Don't toss faith aside because it's archaic, it's old. Go ahead. Live in your sleepy, dead state. Satiating your stomach, your sensualities, numbing your mind with nonsense, and getting false hope, addicted to, to the, to, to what men consider victories. And what is the vain stupidity of the culture war? Fight the good fight, finish the race, put on the whole armor of God. Repent, study the scripture, and pray without ceasing. For like him, we will overcome the world and the promises that we so desire in our hearts we will be given unto us on this life but in the everlasting abundant life to come where we will like him be in a state of perfection serving and reigning under him forever and ever be reconciled unto the Lord this is Christian MC Fulmer Signing out.